Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 72 here at camp. A beautiful day here at camp. The birds are chirping, the squirrels are collecting their nuts. There's an owl in every hole in every tree. I've talked about this before. When I was a kid, I would draw every tree with a hole in it for an owl. I would draw seven trees on a piece of paper, and each tree would have an owl in it. When was the last time you saw a fucking owl in a tree? You never have. E I haven't. I think owls are so beautiful. What an incredible critter. <laughs> what an incredible critter. Not to talk about J.K. Rowling, because obviously she has done nothing but horrible things to the trans community. But what animal would you bring to Hogwarts? Oh, probably a cat. What you would you bring? Oh my God, why did I even ask you that? Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like an owl is kind of fun and because, like, they but have the ability to you. fly. Now, does, you're a kitty girl. What about the people who don't have owls? Like, do they just not get mail? Well, there's got to be a community owl for each floor. Mm. Yeah, house owl. A house owl. Oh, a house owl. Mm, like, I would pick an owl. Yeah. What else is on the? What else can you pick from them? Um, I think a salamander. A frog. Um, I made that up. No, a rat. Maybe. Oh, a rat. Yeah. Rat. Scabbers. What's up with no dog? They said absolutely no dog. No. no seeing eye dogs here. We are not handicapped accessible. Too yappy. And yeah, like that's yeah. Let's look at Hogwarts. Is that ADA compliant? I don't think it is. So let's shut it down. Let's, let's shut it down. Sh you know what is ADA compliant? This camp. It is. We've we've installed ramps and smooth pathways to all of the showers. I know we talk about that a lot. That, that you have to watch out for roots. But we have just uh, made um, Camp Shady Birch ADA compliant. Yes, and we did put a um, an outlet cover in every single plug. So you can try to stick your finger in there, but you're not going to. I shocked myself plugging something in to um, my bedroom thing last night. Did you know that? No. I was playing with that yesterday. The house is incredibly dry. It's it's asking for an electrical fire at this point. I plugged in my light and it like, I, so you know when you see the spark go in, it's yeah. like, is that okay? Well, what is your, that happening? Was your light turned on before you plugged it in? Maybe. I think that's what it is. You can never, don't plug in a light that's already turned on. It's also my grandmother's lamp. Oh. It's an old lamp. You guys know, campers, you know those lights, they have their gold base and they're, they're for tabletops and they're usually in old libraries and they have that green glass kind of thing. I love that. Classic I love them. Look. That's my Nana's. Love her to death. Hope she comes through when, we, when I um, talk to Teresa. But um, yeah, I, I, it is an old lamp. So that's probably why I electrocuted. I almost electrocuted myself. Yeah, and it is dry. It is scary in here. Yeah, but you know what? Even an electrocution can't get me down right now. And why is that? I'm having the best day ever, campers. Can I tell you all about it? You might have already seen it on my Instagram. This is like a week old at this point. Yeah, because you just learned the news today as we're recording. Yeah. Oh, my God. We are recording a full week in advance. We have to. Aren't we getting better at this? I would say so. If, if you would have asked us a year ago, guys, we were like recording episodes like 12 hours before, like Jonathan, edit as fast as possible. It gets really hard sometimes because we we don't, we've never missed a week that we haven't planned to, right. have we? No, I don't, th no, we have not. So like we really are dedicated to the time on here. It's like our number one thing here. We have to be on time. Every episode goes out at the perfect right time every single week. So we're really ahead of schedule. So yes, so we're a week behind right now. Okay, so get to it. Why are you so excited? Come on, tell the news. Okay. I opened my email this morning, and I was nominated for a Queerity Award. How crazy is that? That is so well-deserved. Thank you so much. And I'm so proud of you and Thank you. so happy for you. I opened my – I just didn't think it was coming. I didn't even know that they were even – it was like they were even like sourcing people for nominations. Nobody nominated me. I talked to my manager. They weren't. They didn't like submit me for anything. Like they just the the Queerty like just picked me. Queerty is like this big media company out of Los Angeles, and they just kind of promote and share stories about queer music, queer art, queer actors, queer content creators, queer movies. It's like a big queer gailed big hub of content and mm -hmm. information of um just like movies and stuff. Yeah, we actually went to last year's Queerty Pride event. Yes, and they used my picture from that event. 
with a little posting of it. And I thought it was so cool because we went to this Pride event last year that the Queerty put on in um, New York and they were honoring a lot of people. And I just thought, how amazing is that to like be a part of a big group of people and be recognized? And it's my time. It's your time. You work so hard endlessly around the clock and you just like, you really put in the work and you just bring so much joy to so many people. Thank you. I, I love it. I literally love making videos. Um, I've been doing it now for like five years full time. And um, it's just good to be validated. I feel like I have a small corner of the internet. I love the people um, who watch my stuff. And I feel like we're all a real good connected family. But it's cool when you don't think people are watching beyond that that are watching. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there is a little bit of a sad news with this. Yeah. So let's move on to that part. It's kind of hard. I'm actually a little heartbroken by it. So when I was really excited telling Jonathan about this morning, I was, he was like, oh, I was like, they have a big award show, red carpet. They're going to announce it. It's like a big press thing. It's in LA on March 12th. We got to go to LA to do this. And he was like, oh no, Zach, that's the day before our Teresa Caputo interview. Mm. And Teresa's interview is at like 10 AM in New York. And this is going to be in LA. It's probably going to be, I don't have the official time, but it's going to be like an eight o'clock show. Right. Which is like already like midnight here. Yeah. It's like a three hour time difference. I'd have to get a red eye and flights are so inconsistent. And I'm just so scared that like what time would I have to get to the airport? How close is the airport? In my mind, I am not giving up on it just yet. Because if I can find the right flight, I will just be exhausted and do it all. One thing about you, if there is a will, there is a way. I went to your friend's wedding till midnight and then woke up the next morning at 4 a.m. in Philadelphia and drove to my best friend's um, baby shower because I didn't want to miss it. And I drove six hours to her baby shower after four hours of sleep at a wedding just to be there for it because I just wanted to do both. And I was like, I can be there. I can do both. And I really believe that I can do both as long as the flight is there. I don't care if I'm exhausted. I just need the flight to be available. I don't want to miss it. We'll see what happens. The pieces are going to fall where they're supposed to fall. Yeah. And, you know, whether or not you do go, it's amazing that you got nominated. You're right. Yeah. So well deserved. And you know, bitch, it's not the last nomination for you. I know, but it's it means a lot to me. I just I know. you never you never want to uh, like live on the hope and expectations of other opportunities. You want to take everything that's in front of you. So if I can campers, I'm gonna try to do both. But obviously, Teresa comes first. Hmm. That's a huge opportunity. Yeah, you know, I'm a lifetime girly. I'm a TLC girly. She's on Lifetime now. That's what she's doing. That's now. what she's that's doing. That's the now, show yeah. she's plugging. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's the only the only issue. So I I emailed the like the, the the committee and I was like, thank you so much for the nomination. I am over the moon. Unfortunately, because of a filming commitment, I cannot be there in person. I think right now, but I am so grateful to be nominated, and I'm going to continue to like promote the voting and stuff like that. I'm not yeah. gonna like not talk about it. Because I am super excited about it. So everybody who's listening, go vote. Because as this comes out, you still have time to go vote. So yeah, a lot if of time. you haven't already, we'll leave a link in the video description of this or in the show notes if you're listening, wherever you're listening. Go vote, please. Zachariah. You don't know who some people that are um, against in my category? Yeah. Who are we pitted against? Ugh, Chris Olsen. It's like, God, I can never be as popular as Chris Olsen. Chris Olsen's always going to be the number one guy. I can't beat the guy. He's always going to be bigger and better than me. So Chris Olsen, Rosie O'Donnell, Jonathan's favorite. Now, so you don't want to go to the awards to meet your icon. Now there's someone who I may have accidentally voted for. My finger slipped. <laughs> I think Buffy voted for Rosie O'Donnell. Why is that? Because Buffy, she's she's I don't know. She's always got a little trick up her sleeve. Yeah, she's a naughty girl. She likes it for the plot. She's always got something up her sleeve. There's her. a bunch of us on there. A lot, a lot of people. So if I win, amazing. If I don't. I just, I got nominated. And I, I, this is my Oscars moment, you guys. This is truly the start of something new for me. But I've won other awards. Okay, let's talk about your other awards. I won in 2020 um, Content Creator of the Year for Boston Magazine. Mm-hmm. That was cool. I remember that. I was with you. And I don't remember how we found out, but it wasn't from Boston Magazine. No, they never reached out. Someone like told me about it or I like saw on like a Google alert. And I was like, wait, what is this? And then I went to my local Barnes & Noble and bought four of the magazines. I still have all four. We have all four downstairs. Yeah. Um, but I, those are the awards I've won um, professionally, I guess. But I, I, I don't know if I talked about this in the show, but I, I, um, I won like superlatives in high school. Continue. I won um, Most Likely to be Famous, mm-hmm. which is... It is working. <laughs> Oops. Um, hey, they had they had my my high school had a third eye for me. They knew that kid's a star. He won't shut the fuck up. Um, 
So I won that. I won most dramatic, which is like just call that the gay boy award. It's like, what what straight man in high school has ever won that award? Most traumatic has always gone to the gay person. Let's yeah. look at let's look at the historical facts there. Um, and then I won Mr. Dartmouth. Okay, expand on Mr. Dartmouth. Mr. Dartmouth is a local male beauty pageant, essentially. A lot of high schools in my area had them, but you didn't have that, did you? No, we had we had nothing of the sort. I don't think I don't know if it's a Massachusetts thing or like it's just certain areas, but like basically what they do is the seniors put on this show and they have a bunch of guys and they all compete in like a beauty pageant. So there's like a swimsuit portion, there's a talent portion, there's formal wear. I do know this story, but you did swimwear? Yeah, and I was so fat, and I was so self-conscious, but I did it. I ripped open my um my um my tank top and was like, fuck it, look at these titties. Because <laughs> he's like, you can't, you have to just go for it because yeah. no one's ever going to look at you the way you're looking at you. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, and then after we did the talent portion, I sang, I danced. What did you sing again? Um, I sang Paula Nutini, New Shoes. How's that hey, go? I put some new shoes on and suddenly everything right. I've never heard of that. I'm in my short mind. on money, but long on time. Slowly dancing in the sweet sunshine. It's such a good song. I sang that and then I sang <laughs> You Raised Me Up. And then I cut that and I said, wait, I'm not a singer. I'm a dancer. Felicia hit the track. My Felicia partner, hit the Felicia. Track. Yeah, Felicia. Where was it? She came out. She danced with me. We danced to start it from the bottom. And this was a throwback. Ready for this? Hmm. This was the biggest song when I was a senior in high school. Macklemore, can we go thrift shopping? Oh. I'm going to pop some tags. So in the show, there was a big group number. But before this, the, the people who put on the show discussed the group number, we already had to submit our talents. So I already submitted my entire thing that I was going to do that song. Then they come to me like three weeks for the show. They're like, but we're starting to play in the group number. They're like, Zach, we're doing, um, we're doing that song. Fraud. Yeah. They're like, everybody's going to come out and like thrift store attire. So they're like, you can either keep your song and just do it again, or you can change it. And I was like, Okay, I'm keeping it. I already choreographed an entire routine with Felicia to it. You were going to like, I'm sorry. My choreograph was a lot stronger than the group choreograph that they have for all these like jock boys like it was nothing sounds like they weren't clever enough to come up with another concept so they stole yours no i don't know i don't know if that's it but um i did have to go on my number was after the group number so i don't know oh, if anyone noticed but i think probably everybody noticed yeah but it was i i did five different songs in mine it was like a medley so it wasn't like the whole the whole performance yeah, you were showing your variety yeah and then after the talent portion happened they they were like okay these six are are, are moving forward I got called and I was so happy. And then we all got brought into like the um, hallway because they didn't want us to hear the questions. And then one by one, they bring the top six of us out. And then um, the I heard the question. They're like, what makes you Dartmouth? And I was just like, I did this whole speech about how I went in freshman year, like knowing nobody except my partner, Felicia, who became from the same school together. And she was like my partner for Mr. Dartmouth, like my date basically. And I was like, and look at me now, four years later, competing on this stage with people I never met. And I feel like I really threw myself into the culture here, enjoying clubs and the faculty. And I've made so many friends. And I think that's the power of Dartmouth. It's all about community and, and, and being open with one another. And I just, I love this town. And, it's the judges ate that it shit up. up. And I left the stage. I said, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> what you were doing. I didn't know about women. I said, I'm, I'm placing. I'm yeah, placing top three. Of course. And then they can't, they, they did the top three. And it was like, and then I got called and I won. Well, congratulations, Mr. Dartmouth. I feel terrible right now. I feel like I'm just running through all my accomplishments. Well, I feel like if I had to describe myself, I would say I'm like super sweet. Yep. A little tangy. Yeah, better. On hot days. <laughs> yeah. Foul. Something meaty. I, I feel like I'm a very nice person. And so did everybody who voted me for the superlative of sugar and spice because he's so nice. You won sugar and spice because he's so nice award? Honestly, today is is the only award I've I've really won. When was this? This was third grade. Oh, so yeah. Was it a certificate? It was. Yeah, there was a paper certificate. Um, I probably have it in storage somewhere. I think I had it laminated. I had I had this weird obsession with laminating things. I just started laminating everything. It's really expensive. That's an expensive hobby. Oh my! I literally began laminating like 
the comic newspapers, like the entire thing. Never returned to it to look at it again, but I was like, hey, if, a, if there's a leak in here, Family Circus is covered. <laughs> you should go into archiving. I would love that. When I worked at the um, the university, I loved archiving. I was like so into it. Yeah, maybe there's some sort of archiving club in New York you can join. Yeah, does it pay well? It's a club, so I, I think it's more pro bono, but... Clubs don't pay. <laughs> you mean I don't get I don't get a full commission from the club? Maybe they'll give me an award. Yeah, well, listen, you never know when awards are to come. I, this award I got nominated for today, I don't know what happened until today. Tomorrow, you could get nominated for an award. And you know what? If I'm not, that's quite all right, because I know that I am sugar and spice because I'm so nice. Thank you, Miss Lavernier's class at Crystal Lake Woods Creek. Jonathan bought me roses for my um, award today. Because you deserve that. Thank you. I really love the gift of fresh flowers. I've talked about this a hundred times. Mm. It's just a beautiful sentiment. Thank you. I got a lot of stares when I was walking. The The first part of the gift was for me because I walked with the flowers around It's town. like three blocks? Yeah, I went the long way. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do another loop. It started drizzling a little bit. As you should. I know. Someone was like, lucky lady. I was like, it's your boy with a cock. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Stop and Jop today because I was getting stuff for this like project I'm working on. I was like getting ingredients. And I looked at their flowers and they just like weren't giving. And I almost bought myself flowers today, but I didn't need to. You didn't need to. I bought you flowers. I feel like you always come clutch with flowers. I should just suspect it because you always buy me flowers and I like love it so much. And now we have beautiful red roses with baby's breath in the kitchen. Well, I was waiting with baby's breath. I know. We were separated all day today. I was on the I was on the road on Long Island doing all my errands today. It literally, you got back like maybe an hour ago. I don't even know what time it is. It's like 7 p.m. right now. The project I'm working on I want to talk about, but I think I got to look at the schedule because I want it to come out a little bit more closer to my birthday because it has something to do with my birthday. This episode, oh, I actually can talk about it now. No, I'll, yeah, I'll talk about it now. I'm I'm planning a, a photo shoot for my birthday. I do it every year. I like source these ideas for my photo shoots. And I'm doing this like school themed one. It's kind of like 29. I'm turning 29. So to me, it's like, oh, 29 to me feels like senior year. Because 30, I'm like going to be an official adult now. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I went to Long Island to buy a birthday cake for the photo shoot. And I got the most gorgeous birthday cake I've ever purchased. I love that those cakes are so trendy. They're so like vintage, but so expensive. We'll put a picture here on the podcast, but it's it's like those birthday cakes that have um like the the cherries on it that are like circles and they come in a heart shape. Yeah, they're the vintage cakes. I forget. I saw a TikTok that was like, if you're looking for this cake, this is what you call it. And it was like some word that I had never heard of before, but there is a name for it. I just don't remember what it was. So me speaking this right now is really not yeah, helpful okay. for the conversation. I think they know. I think when you say vintage cake with cherries on it, sometimes a heart shape. They're so trendy. Everyone's seen them. Yeah. Well, the bakery, the baker was so nice. The local baker I went to, she was great. Found her on Instagram. She did the order turnaround so quick. Good. Yeah, she was amazing. And then she gave me a free croissant. I chose the almond. I love an almond croissant. Oh, so good. Yeah. It was a good day. A busy day. Um. Also... Yeah. Should we update the campers on our Botox journey? It's only been seven days. Oh, yeah. A little Botox check-in, Botox check-in. Um, yeah, can't move my forehead. I can, like, scrunch down still. Like, my, my horizontal rare line, is it there? Kind of, but not really. Ah, shut up. It's going away. I can't, I can't raise, like, you raise me up? No, you can't. Yeah, let us know on the comments below on YouTube if you think we look smooth. I feel as smooth as a baby's bottom right me now. Me too. My these are gone. You yeah. told me last night you were like, "Wait, smile." And you took a picture. I was like, "Oh my god!" Literally, my crow's feet are gone. Yeah. So you. So are you feeling any sort of anxiety that you were feeling last week? Um. Yeah, but I think I'm just like strapped in. I think I'm just like whatever. Every day I wake up, it feels like I've just left a face mask on. You know those clay face masks? Oh, I love those ones. That's exactly yeah. what this feels like. It like it feels like. Like, I have to, like, wipe a mask off of my forehead when I, like, scrunch it up. My friend Jenna was doing a face mask that she bought on TikTok, and it was, like, a skin-tightening one, and she was sending pictures of herself with it on, and it made her look like she was six years old because it was, like, so pushed back, which is, doesn't make sense because you think that would make you look younger. But um, when she took it off, her skin looked amazing, and then she was like, go check it out. It's selling out on TikTok. And I'm like, not as all bought into the fucking TikTok shop. I'm so sick of it. I don't think I've bought anything off of the tiktok shop ever i've bought like 900 things that's not true i would say i probably bought nine things 
I don't even think I have my my card information in there. I bought your um, Christmas gift on there that one of the, those icy head things that go over your face for uh, headaches. Yeah, and that is where I saw it. No, I don't. I haven't bought anything off of there. Yeah, well, they're pushing it hard. Oh, I don't. We all know it. How's your How's your Botox feeling? I feel great. I feel like my eyebrows are looking a lot better than they were the first time I did it. So I'm I'm locked. I'm fine. I'm relaxing. I feel cool, calm, collected, smooth. I feel like if I think about it too much, like I'm doing right now, it kind of freaks me out. I'm telling you, four months from now, when it starts to go away, you're going to be more freaked out. You're like, what the hell? What the hell? I look like this? Jesus. Yeah, you're right. I should just cherish the moment that I have now. <sighs> Let's get into today's episode, campers. Attention, campers. Please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back, campers, to morning announcements. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed. That we think you should spread like wildfire. Jonathan, do you want to start off today's episode? Sure. Let's hear it. So I started reading this article. I was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Like this can't be real. And then I realized that um that this article is from eight years ago. I read it and I was like, wait, this is kind of juicy. And then there was a follow-up and I was like, okay, wait, this could literally be a gossip doc. So I'm gonna read it for morning announcements. Okay. So it might be eight years old, but um, but it's it's hot goss for New us to today. You. Yes. Okay, so I'll read the um, the title after. Okay. So this is coming from uh, rap- Rappler.com. Not even sure if they're still in business. And we are in Jakarta, Indonesia. So there was a listing that was posted for a single-story house built in 2013 sitting on a 523-square-meter lot with two bedrooms, two baths. It even boasts a granite floor, a fish pond. Okay. That's fun. And a spacious backyard. And it comes with a wife. What? (laughs) All for the cost of $76,000. That poor woman. So, okay, but here, so here's the scoop. There's this 40-year-old woman. Her name is Wina Leah. And she was like, hey, I need to sell my house. I need a realtor. So she finds this guy. His name is Dion. Is that and, how she said it? Hey, and he was all his house. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably something like that. <laughs> and she's chatting it up with this guy, Dion. And she mentions that she was widowed and she's been widowed since 2000. Also, keep in mind, this is occurring in the year 2015. Mm-hmm. Okay, but this is still fresh news. Okay. Yeah, new to us. Just printed today. I got to laminate it. <laughs> so there's a quote. I'm going to read the quote. Wena said, Dion suggested I put up the tagline, buy the house and marry the owner at the same time. And I said, okay to it. I'm looking for a husband anyway. So then my thought is like, okay, are you're trying to sell the house. Like if a guy buys the house and then he marries you, then you're still living in the house. Yeah, she comes with the house. So she's saying. Okay, so she's like not trying to move out. She's just trying to like get money for the house and a husband. And okay, that's honestly, then she doesn't even have to worry about a moving company. Wait, I didn't even think about that. So she's selling the house. She's profiting from the sale. She gets to stay in the house. Nothing changes. But what if she hates the man? Is that contingent? So. Is this cultural? I I don't know. This doesn't seem I, I don't very know. Western. Okay, so then the ad went absolutely viral in just three days. Count them one, two, three. Uh, that was a fantastic accent. Thank you. So good. And it's funny because the last episode was uh, Australian themed. The title was, and I I think I said one Australian word. I think I said nar, and that was it. Yeah. Well, you don't always have to go so hard. You kind of keep it. It comes out when it comes out. Yeah, you know? okay. that's good. So according to the ad, uh, if you buy the house without negotiating the price, okay, then you can take the owner as your wife. Terms and conditions apply. So they're like, we're not, this is the price. You're going to pay the price. You're going to pay the price. And then you're going to get the hand in marriage. So then like, what are these terms and conditions, right? So Wina also owns this salon that's nearby. And she said she has, like, very specific criteria for a husband. So it can't just be, you know, what you were saying, it can't just be anybody. It can't be some random uggo who's going to try to buy her house. No, no uggos for Wiener. No uggos for Wiener. No No uggos uggos for Wiener. No No uggos for Wiener. Wiener. You guys got it. And then she said randomly, this, (laughs) this quote feels so random, but it was placed at this point. Quote, every time I fall in love, it fails. It's happened twice now. Wiener needs a movie. Wiener's Great Escape. Oh, I love that. We, Wiener's wonderful life. Wiener's wonderful wedding. Oh, 
Perfect. Good. Okay, so she said she wants to sell the house. It would be great if, you know, at the same time she could get a soulmate. But the important thing is that he's single. And I feel like that's not a lot of criteria to meet. Don't be an asshole. Don't be ugly. Don't be single. Or do be single. Sorry, do be single. She didn't say don't be ugly. She just said don't just said, she just said do be single. No, I know, but that's just like the criteria that I'm putting in for her. Yeah, you're a girl's girl. You're looking out for Weena's best interest. Yeah, I'm really just looking out. Gotta keep an eye out for my Weena. <gasps> Clever girl. <laughs> Um, so she says she also doesn't want this person to have ever been married or be a widower. And Nina, that's not fair because you're a widower. Yeah. I don't know. The widower. She's like, I want to be the first love. Weena, Weena's crazy. What was her business down the street? Hair salon? A salon, yeah. They didn't say what kind of salon. It was just a salon. So I don't think you need to worry about She's it. She's like, it's not just hair. It's nails too, yeah. okay? We do a lot. We don't have to pick a category. Weena never picks a category. That's no. one thing about Weena. But she is picking a man who is, quote, mature and responsible. So then a week later, this guy, his name is Reddy, R-E-D-I. He said, hey, I'm ready. And he is a 40-year-old widower from a nearby town. Um, I guess she's just like, you know what? You're a widower. It's fine. I can relate on that. Like, originally, she didn't want that. But now she's like, you know what? You're cute. And uh, I'll uh, I'll make a, you get a pass. You get a pass on this. So Reddy said he's ready. I'm looking for a wife. When um his staff that was working for him saw the ad and gave him Weena's phone number. So he's like, this is how it came along. I wasn't look. I wasn't seeking you out. My uh, my staff was the one who told me that. Yeah, I should Reddy call also you. has a money because you don't. You're not broke if you have staff. Staff is a boss bitch move, okay? So, I don't know. Weena seems like she's coming up. Yeah, so then they spend some time, you know, talking for the next few months, getting to know each other. Good, cool. And, and then they start talking about the wedding. To so like, hey, I like you. You like me. Let's let's do this. Let's get married. Let's get hitched. She's like, but let's make that check clear. Yeah, let's wait for that check to clear first. Then we can talk about venues. Also, all of this was happening over the internet and the phone. Um, so they, they were talking like wedding and she was like, okay, I'm going to meet you face to face and we're going to have the wedding like right then and there. <gasps> Romantic. So obviously news outlets are covering this and Reddy's face is like being plastered on like TV in the newspapers. People are like eating up the story. Like this is so fun. Like it's so crazy. It's so campy. Um, and that's when this woman named Endang comes out of the woodwork and she goes straight to a news outlet and is like, hi, I'm Reddy's wife. Oh. <gasps> I did not see this coming. I thought this was going to be like the great fairy tale that we all deserved. No, Wait. you weren't ready. Is that why they weren't meeting? Well, as it turns out, Reddy's not single. And he had actually been married to this woman for just over a year. And they had their story was with his current wife was that they had known each other since they were teens. And when Endang's husband passed away, Reddy was also married to a different woman, left his wife for Entang, and now he's literally showing repeat behavior and is about to leave his current wife for our girl Weena. That's not fair for Weena. That's not fair for... He's a serial widow lover. Mm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He's addicted to the widow lifestyle. Was he ever a widow? No. Oh, so he lied about that. It was a lie. His wife, Endang, was a widow. Okay, I'm ready for his criminal sentence. So, also, Weena learns this through the news. She's like, I turn on the TV and it's there. I go out and get my newspaper and he's there. And, like, that's how she's finding out Ugh, all this Weena, information. the plot thickens. Weena needs her own movie. This is too good. I know. And she was like, I thought I was going to sell the house and get Dick down in it. He's a... Uh, so then Weena confronts Reddy and she's like, bitch, what the fuck is this? Like, is this true? You're not only lying to me about being a widow, but you're currently married and cheating on your wife and planning our wedding. Like you were ready to get through with this had she not spoken up about this. And he's like, ah, oh, shit, like you caught me. You know, it is true. I, I didn't want to tell you. I thought you'd be mad at me. Um, but I can end things with her, though, and we can just have a beautiful life together. Then the wife chimes in again, and she's like, Weena, honestly, if you want him, you can have him, because he promised me everything. He promised me a huge house. I don't have a huge house. He promised me that he would shower me with gifts and all this money. Currently, I'm the one who's paying for our kids' education. This is the real house of Jakarta. And the staff he was talking about? Who are they? Didn't exist. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Not everybody has staff. That's a real different level. So then Weena's like pissed. But she's like, honestly, I'm just going to stick with my plan A, which was never to have a husband in this situation. She's like, 
if you want the house, pay me right now up front. Otherwise, you're you're not getting any of this. And you're also not getting this hand in marriage. Um, so Reddy did not buy the house because whether he lied or not, he couldn't afford the house. Um, and that's where the story ends. So is Weena still in the house waiting for her Prince Charming? So I tried to look up more about her. But I couldn't find anything. I found a lot of people with the same name on um, on Facebook and on Instagram. You know, reach out to Weena. Hey, Weena. But I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it was. What would you said to her if you had a DM her? I was like, "Hey, read this article. What's the scoop? Like, where are where are we at? Are you wed? I would honestly probably just like scroll through her pictures and get a really good reading on what's going on in her life. But I do imagine that she. Um, is still in the house, but she has found a life that is happy with herself, not because she can't get a man, but because she doesn't need a man. I hope she's writing books. I hope she's writing all this down because this is good content. We're only getting half the story here. Think about all the anguish and turmoil that happened in between mm. the affairs, the media coverage. It's giving Princess Diana. And after she releases that book, she can start a line of children's book and have the first title. Yeah. Weena Weena Ballerina. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. A girl dares to dream. I love that. <laughs> well, honestly, Campers, should we get Weena, Weena here? Yeah, let's get Weena on the horn. For a meet and greet? Please. And then she can try on Princess Girl's wedding gown. Or they can both wear wedding gowns. Gorgeous. I love that. That's a really... I don't... It's actually not a happy story at all. No, it's not a happy... But she was like... She was annoyed and upset at first, but she was like, whatever. Like, it, it is what it is. Um, And then I really... I could not find any follow-ups after that. So I'm sorry to disappoint. But, um, but now you can understand why I started reading it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so good. This is so juicy. Then I realized it was eight years old. And now I'm like, you know what? It doesn't even matter because it's a good story. It's got it's got girth. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So what's your story? Um, I'll tell you my story in a second. My sister just texted me on my iPad and I want to read what she sent to me. What? So she's like at this, she's like, she plans corporate events. I'm going to keep it a little anonymous here. But these like big corporate events. So they're they're doing their biggest one of the year right now. And they're in DC planning it. Um, so they're out to drinks. I think the, this is there's so much going on. So there's like, it's all day affairs, but they're getting drinks right now. She goes, my teammate after four drinks just said to me, Kat, I have something to admit to you. Sometimes I listen to Zachariah and Jonathan's podcast. <laughs> oh my God. Is the camper in the room right now? <laughs> I know the camper's name. We'll call her camper A. Okay. And if you're listening, camper A, I love you and never feel guilty about that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. You should text her back and be like, it's hey, so recording funny. the podcast now and shout at her out. I'll tell her after we're in the... Okay. Ready for my story? Yeah. So this article comes from CNN UK. It, the article is written by Issy Ronald. The title is, British Zoo has a new plan to rehabilitate its potty-mouthed parrots. So back in 2020, five foul-mouthed African gray parrots donated to the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park in eastern England were isolated from the flock in an attempt to improve their language. That was a tongue twister of a sentence. I feel like I'm taking a linguistics class trying to read that sentence. Yeah, so five of these... So the whole article is specifically about African gray parrots. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar? I feel like I may be. They're I did a popular that, breed. I did that story where the... Um, the parrots and the parakeets were like FaceTiming each other, the Lonely Parrots Club. That must have been it. That must have been an African um an African gray parrot. Yeah, because they're really like intelligent that. like mm -hmm. that. And that kind of goes with this. So five of these, like they five of these naughty, naughty, naughty parent parrots were donated to the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park, which is like a zoo, um, in an attempt to improve their language. The owners were like, they are so bad. They are saying the worst, most foul words all day long. That we can't even take care of them anymore. It's like getting that bad. Can you demonstrate what they are? No, well, we, we're going to get a copyright strike. I mean, we're going to get a strike on the YouTube if I'm saying these words. Okay, but it has. But you have them. Um, no. It oh, just, I don't think CNN was going to start like writing the c word. Oh, okay. Like gotcha. that would be crazy if okay. they wrote that out of the article. Uh, it's like they kind of they kind of imply like. Well, I'll keep reading. <laughs> they put like a quote around it. They're like, "Hey, it's a quote. <laughs> or, a quote's a quote, babe." Listen, we're just trying to be factual, reporting the news. So that happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. So now, as of Tuesday, they have three more coming with a similar problem. It's another total of eight of these foul mouth parrots. So the five original girls are still in the dollhouse? They're still in the dollhouse. Four years later. Yeah, like they're there. Okay. But, so they're like anticipated on like staying there? Like it's not, uh, yeah, they're I, just going to like live. They're, it's it, a zoo. 
Okay. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think there's a lot, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of them though. So three more just came and the three newest ones names are um, Erica, Captain, and Sheila. There's a quote right here. It says, when we came to move them, the language that came out of their carrying boxes was phenomenal. Really bad. Not normal swear words. These were proper expletives. The park chief executive, Stevie Nichols, told CNN. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. They're not like, it's not, they're not saying like bitch and ass. Like they're going full F bomb. They're flowing full C like, and, and they're British. So oh, they got add it. that twist to it, babe. Yeah, you should fucking bitch, babe. Yeah, it's like, you well, can't say that. I'm going to bleep it out. Yeah, you got to bleep that. That was too, that was too much, babe. Sorry. We've put eight, this is another quote. We've put eight really, really offensive swearing parrots with 92 non-swearing ones. He said, that's the plan. Uh, this can backfire. You'll find out. Oh, God. In the new strategy, the eight parrots could learn all the nicest noises like microwaves and vehicles <laughs> reversing <laughs> that the other parrots in the flock favor. But if the other night to pick up the swears, it's going to turn into some adult aviary. That is hilarious. So they're really kind of like rolling the dice here to hope that it works. Yeah. Um, after some time in isolation, integrating the five original birds into the flock was mostly successful, Nichols said, but they still curse sometimes and even laugh afterwards, mimicking the most common reactions to the foul language. Parrots precisely echo the sounds they hear, so six of them have got men's voices and two of them have ladies' voices. Like, those are the most swearing at each other. I wonder, like, what... So was it just the people they were living with, or were they, like, watching too much Beavis and Butthead? I'm not sure, but then he goes on to say, and when they're all swearing together, it sounds really bad. Yeah, it probably <laughs> it probably does. I think this is hysterical. Is there a video? No, there There's was... There's gotta be. Well, we have the... It's the Lincolnshire like African swearing parrots. Like it's gotta be, there's okay. gotta be some evidence. I'm going to do some research. I'll find out. The park has installed large signs warning visitors about the parrot's language, but Nichols says it hasn't received a single complaint. They even go on to say like, Oh, like people, they hear more swears from people like looking at them, trying to get them to swear. Um, African greys are highly social parrots forming groups of up to a thousand birds to roost at night in the, in the wild. And they all communicate with each other throughout various calls. Researchers believe that um, their intelligence is almost unparalleled in the animal kingdom, comparable to that of apes, whales, and dolphins. So these are really considered to be some of the smartest animals we have. That is wild. Why do people say bird brain as an insult? Because think about it between them and the pigeons. Like pigeons remember faces. They can get like, I'm sorry, the carrier pigeons. How the fuck do they know where to go? No, I know. I, I think maybe chickens are dumb. Are they? Maybe roosters are dumb. Well, they think what they're called. No, I didn't mean roosters. I meant turkeys. Oh, they're just vicious. Now you're just turkeys. now you're just naming birds. Well, it's all the birds I know. Nichols continues to say that he was just up at the aviary, aviary, and he was like, "The noises are fantastic up there. Everything from squeaking gates to door slammings, people laughing, and mobile phones. They can just make noises of anything. It's not just like voices; it's like truly anything they can repeat." Um, he then goes on to say that he doesn't think they'll ever lose the swearing because it's um, as someone swears, they'll just repeat it again. Like it'll just come back just like yeah. memory. Yeah. So I think this is really interesting. I think they're taking the wrong approach here. I think this should be marketed as the swearing parrots of Lincolnshire. I would go to see that. I don't care about behaved parrots. I don't need to hear another parrot make another microwave sound. I want to see a parrot cuss me out. They should make it like some sort of like freak show where you pay $25 to a bearded lady and it's this smoky big red tent and you walk in there and they're all on these like dill little, little like I don't know poles and there's a guy in the corner he's making um, dirty martinis and it's like year round everybody come see the crazy swearing parrot and they have this whole dialogue and we're all cheering and we're all drunk and red faced and we're throwing bottles. I think that's a fun idea. I'm gonna piggyback off that idea because that can that show can run for a couple of months and then when the audience gets no, like exhausted from it, I don't think they will. I think it's syndicated. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we can split the team in two, or you know, you can take the original eight dolls and I'll take the ninety two that are, are adapting to the cuss words. No, because I'm producing this show and you're producing um, when, what was her name? Win. Weena? Yeah, you're producing Weena's movie. You don't have time to work on the Lincolnshire African parrots. This is my project. Well, if I did. What's your idea? Wouldn't it be good if they did like a little comedy skit show? Yeah, of course. Like for the adults. Because I feel like you could train them to like react when you're like, meep, 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 and then they just like cuss. And I don't know. I think I feel like that would be funny. Like put on like a short little play with little cuss words. Stop stopping who they are. 
Let these parrots swear. Let the parrots swear. Everyone say it together. Let, Let the, the parrots parrot swear. swear. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. The part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. Um, my take a hike is kind of for myself as I was writing this. Why'd you nod? Because I did it last week. And actually, there is a correlation. Sometimes you have to tell yourself to take a hike. We're not perfect people on this earth. But one thing about the campers here, when we're down at the campfire at night and we're reflecting under the moon and the stars by the fire, warming up with mold wine and good camaraderie, we are introspective here at this camp. We look at each other and say, you know what? Sometimes we're the problem. But you know what? No one else can say that. If you don't listen to this podcast, you're gaslighting me. But if another camper tells you that, it's like, okay, well, this is a real friend. So it's a safe circle here. But if anyone who doesn't listen to this podcast tries to tell you that you're the take a hike, no, baby. No, it doesn't work that, that way. Nope, nope, nope. No, it's, so it's campers only. It's okay that you're a girl and take a hike. Okay. And it's also kind of, now that I'm thinking about what you actually did, it is very similar to it. But you know what? We're going to roll with the punches because I was writing this down as it was happening and I could tell. <laughs> so... You made us some fried rice and I had my headphones in because I was editing something on my computer. God knows what I'm doing. And you're sitting across from me typing away, tippy tappy typing away, probably um, on a Excel spreadsheet or something. And you kept looking up at me and I had my headphones in and I'm like, <gasps> I was not looking up at you. No, it wasn't you. I'm not blaming you, but I knew what I was doing and it was chewing too loud. I could hear it within my headphones. I, I was, was not looking up at you no, telling you that. I I'm not saying okay. that I'm doing this take a hike because of you, but I knew that I was chewing too loud, and then I tried to chew quieter, and there's simply no way to chew quieter. It happened when we went to um to go see Poor Things, and I ordered the pizza, and I'm gnawing on the pizza. It gets really quiet in the movie, and I'm like, chewing really slow, and I'm like, well, now it just sounds like my lips are smacking together. Same with the Iron Claw. I think the problem here is that you're not chewing loud. Your take a hike is when you become self-aware of your chewing. And then I can't even enjoy it. I'm I'm literally swallowing whole, unchewed <laughs> pieces of pizza. Choking on food to avoid making a chewing noise? That's Ooh. insane, babe. Just chew. Oh my God, wait, where were we yesterday? Where were we yesterday? Where you were looking at me and you were like, why aren't you talking? And I was like, I should win an award for how I swallowed my choke. What the hell did we do? Oh, we went to that event yesterday and I was literally choking, but I swallowed it because I didn't want to be a nuisance to the people around me. What were you eating? I wasn't eating. I was drinking the champagne. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Uh, hey, I'm pretty good at playing it off, I suppose. Um, so the there is a thing. It's called me misophonia not to be confused with mesophilioma no i've seen people on tiktok write that out i know you're telling the truth he's not lying campers i'm telling you he's telling the truth. and i'm sure some campers out there like i have dry mouth right now and sometimes when i edit the podcast i'll like i'll i'll mute my track because i'll be i'll be making noises with my mouth that nobody needs to hear yeah yeah so when i was growing up my dad had a really bad tooth and i can say this because he doesn't even know what a podcast is so he'll never hear this he had a really bad tooth and he'd eat on the couch and he would do this thing where he'd like take a bite of something and they'd go. And I almost like cursed my father out. I was like, dad, I'm going to, I can't, I cannot hear that man eat. He is the one person that if I see him chewing, I will leave the room. One thing about a bad tooth, it doesn't get better. So if, the, if, I was, if that was happening when I was nine, can you picture the noises that are coming out of that man now? Oh my oh, god. god. I no, I'm being honest. Yeah, that's okay, being honest. I love him. He's my father. But you know, when he's in the same room with me and he gets some sort of toffee. Oh my god. If you gave that you wanna you wanna send me over the edge, give my father a saltwater taffy and put us in the same room together. <laughs> I'll claw my eyeballs out. I'll scream at the top of my lungs. I can't handle it. I can't handle that noise. It's like triggers me. Um, you no, know, but sometimes you do chew a little loud. But it's just, I think you just a really expressive person, like you've said. So you do a lot of like mouth movements but too. But even, I don't care. It's okay. Thank you. Even when my mouth is closed though, I'm like, how is it making so much noise? But then I'm like, is it in my head? Because I can't, I only hear what's in my ears. Like sometimes we had to put the, the subtitles on the TV because I'm crunching my chips too loud. I think you need to be more comfortable with taking up space on this earth. Yeah. You know what? That's good advice. I know. I this is dear counselors. Did I get a little serious right there, guys? You did. Are you feeling emotional? Everyone take a beat. You know what? 
<laughs> Today, I'm going to take up space. I'm yeah. going to... I'm going to man spread on the subway. You, you know what? You're allowed to. Thank you. I give you that. No, you give yourself that. It just keeps getting better. <laughs> it just keep. It just keeps getting better. Okay. So that's my take a hike. What have you got for us vibes? My take a hike is when you have dreams and expectations to cook all week. And then when it gets down to it, you're like, damn, I don't want to make this fucking piece of salmon with green beans and brown rice it's 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 it's, it's, this take a hike is beyond having to cook it it's it my take a hike is who was i five days ago with these grand dreams of grandeur and meal prep and getting it all together because now after this podcast is done recording i'm gonna have cereal for dinner i have all the proper cookings and fixings in my refrigerator for a real adult dinner but I don't want to wash. I don't want to prep. I don't want to cut. I don't want to saute. I just want to relax. So I'm going to give myself a shitty Special K vanilla almond cereal dinner rather than cook. That cereal is so old. No, it's not, babe. I literally just opened it up last week and the expiration date was like November. When did you buy that? I bought it probably like in November of last year. <laughs> okay. It has a year expiration date, but I didn't open it up until last week. Okay, but it is old. The night, it was two weeks ago I opened it up. The night that you went out on your little excursion in the Windy City. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, okay. frozen monsoon. When I got hexed. Yeah, you're, you're, during your hex, I was cracking up with a fresh box of cereal. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with just having cereal for dinner, but I get it. It's like you have the idea and it would be so delightful if it was like there and done. But after you're done a long day of work, I'm sure campers can relate. Like, do you really want to peel the potato? Sometimes when you cook, guys, do you ever feel campers like you spend so much time cooking a meal and then when it's in front of you, you're like, I don't even fucking care anymore. Like, I'm not even hungry at this point. Like, it doesn't even look good. It's like, God. But if, like, you were to make it, I'd be like, yes, 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 yes. But, like, just being so attached to it, it's like, you know what? I'm clocked out. I'm done. There's also been so many times in um, foodborne illness-wise, I don't know if this is good or not. So I wouldn't recommend this, nor would the CDC. But we do oftentimes... Um, take out something frozen, such as a shrimp or or a fish of some kind. We thaw it out, and then we change our mind, put it in the fridge, and then change our mind again, saying like, "Oh my god, we're probably not going to want this tomorrow, so let's put it back in the freezer." It's not. Um, good. It's not good. It's not. But um, you know what though? Like two mighty pines here at Camp Shady Birch, your counselors remain tall, strong, and healthy. Mm. So how bad can it really be? Yeah, look at this trunk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the salmon that was in the freezer that then thawed into a bowl of cold water then into the fridge we're gonna make it tomorrow we have to make it tomorrow yes but we say that every day and then it's like then what happens yeah but then i don't think tomorrow's gonna work out i have my volleyball game your volleyball game isn't until 10 oh my god it's gonna be late i know you're gonna have fun and you're going to go i'm so nervous you guys i'm going to my first volleyball game tomorrow i hope i hope the team really likes me you're already really good friends with one of the players who you just saw yeah but you just saw eleni last week i also didn't know the hierarchy of the team she's basically el presidente she's basically had honcho yes you're a nepo baby you got gifted a spot because you knew the the owner i climbed into the car and she said here's your t-shirt Sorry, I don't have an extra large. <laughs> and I said, bitch. You said, bitch, I'm a, I'm I a, said, I'm a youth medium. I, I'm a small. She yes, said, no, are, I know what people like. <laughs> it was actually really funny. I love when a small runs large. Yeah. Oh, my God. So lux. But it's when that large runs small <laughs> that I really just want to take a hike. Oh, my God. That's so funny. The duality of when a small runs large and when a large runs small. It's just they're, they they sound so close, but they couldn't be further away in, in feeling. Express. I'm going to express myself. I know you have expressions about the store Express, but their clothes are just, it's going to look like it fits when it's on the hanger, when it's on the rack. And then it gets on this rack, on these double Ds, and it doesn't fit. Yeah, they have some sort of European cut, I believe. And I don't know, it's it's giving slim, they love to say slim fit. It's like, well, baby, I'm not on, I'm not drinking slim fit. You know what I mean? I need slim fast to fit into that expression. Also interesting, um, a European cut considering european uncut yeah most europeans are not cut but their tailors are yeah they're spending so much time at the seamstress mm. they did not do um what's it called the breasts the breasts thank you seamstress the breasts wow we're coming up with so many great book titles today do you think the new counselor likes the top 
top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. I've already been nominated for an award this week. <laughs> Who else can make a cut here at Camper Crush of the Week? I love it. Who are you nominating for your Queerity Award? I am such a gamer girl these days. You and I both are. So my Camper Crush of the Week is the Nintendo Switch game Overcooked 2. Yeah, we're back on our video game kick, you guys. I don't think we ever even talked about the first game that we played. Because I think we were like, oh, let's like save this and we can like do a little thing on it. And then we never did. And then we said the same exact thing about this game, which we're already getting over. So I said, if not today, then when? I think we talked about the last game on Patreon. Oh, and that may have been the case. Some campers know about that. But we're playing a new game, Overcook 2. It's all the rage digitally right now. Oh my God, which is so interesting to me um, how these things pop up because the game itself is from 2018. And it's like just now, like, I guess it was popular in the community. I'm sure campers listening have played it before. But um, we've been seeing all of our, our For You page on TikTok. And it's just, you have to work together to run a kitchen and like cook shit. It's like cooking mama. And I think you guys guys need to realize if you don't know this about us when we say we're gamer girls we are not actual gamers so when we talk about a game that we enjoy playing i would firmly believe that almost all of you would like this kind of game because we don't play like video games like that you know what i mean we're I not so but we're not playing call of duty we're not playing fortnite this game consists of a team you want to explain the game to them yeah it's like we're teaming up as two little chefs both named jonathan we couldn't figure out how to change the name so if somebody out there can help us please let us know bing.com was not helpful i tried doing the bing thing it's not working out for me i am so sick of you talking about bing well you know what it was they had a rewards program every time you look something up it, it's one point and then you can earn an amazon uh gift card and i'm like well i'm looking shit up all the time why don't i just set this as my my default browser it's not super user friendly. I'm going to be honest. I don't love it. How many points have you gotten? Um, I have 2,000. And if I want a $5 Amazon card, I have about 200,000 to go. <clears throat> so this isn't working out. It, she's not working out. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So anyway, uh, it's we're two chefs and we're traveling the world. Honestly, the story's a little weak, to be honest. But um, we're just, you know, going from restaurant to restaurant making shit and sending it out the window there's you got to make x amount of dollars you have to wash the dishes it's kind of a little hard to explain on an audio only platform and i didn't really think that through when choosing this yeah it's a game that will cause you and your spouse or you and your friend to get into a physical altercation about who's not performing their job if you've ever worked in a kitchen and you know how much of a nightmare that is it's basically that in cute kawaii cartoon form yeah, and also you think you have a plan, which is like you're on the rice and and the dishes, but it doesn't go that way. But we didn't fight. Well, we had a, we had squalls. It's not really a fight. It's sometimes that we talk to each other in a tone that the other person doesn't like, and then the other person shuts down. And then it's like, well, then we're not playing anymore. Mm. Twice we had to turn the game off. And I'm like, should we be playing a game that's causing this kind of energy? Yeah, very true, very true. We haven't played in a little while. There but was... when you beat that silly little level... Yeah. It's something good. but champagne toasts. <laughs> <laughs> but the game we were playing before that we never talked about was called It Takes Two. And I feel like that one was really good. Yeah, it was good. That was a fun one. Yeah, you have to work as a team. If you guys are into games, look it up. It's fun. The The graphics are um, questionable at best. But we had to work together. And there's certain levels that like I have to stay behind and you do and vice versa. And it was just like a really good team building. I know uh, my friend Rick, who suggested it, was like, yeah, therapists actually like recommend this to to couples to to help with communication. That we did fight during. There were some times. This would be cool if we had a camper out there who's like husband's a gamer or their wife's a gamer and they're like looking to like have an activity. Like these are two games that even if you're not necessarily like really inclined with a remote in your hand, you could learn. It's a controller. It could, exactly. So I have to speak about myself then. It, it, you can learn and you can really enjoy yourselves play. Yeah. Oh my God. That was, Hey, if you would loved one or your best friend or someone is into gaming and you're not necessarily maybe like, and you want to be maybe be like, Hey, could we play this game and just go for there? <gasps> Such a good idea. We are changing lives. We're strengthening bonds. We are. So what are you crushing on? <laughs> I'm crushing on Theodora Siegel. Am I supposed to know who that is? I'm going to tell you all about her. Okay. The <laughs> Theodora the Siegel. Oh, um, Theodora Siegel is 24 years old, and she is the woman behind the viral social media account Got to Go NYC. She goes by Teddy. 
So got to go NYC is this like it's a it's a Google map that this woman has created that basically shows you all of the free public restrooms in New York City. Honestly, very helpful. It is because if you've been to New York or you live in New York, you understand that like it's really difficult to find bathrooms sometimes and it got really bad during COVID. So that's when she was really inspired to create this um like community based google map that people can upload bathrooms that they find currently in the within all five boroughs she has 2413 public restrooms listed wow and the reason why i'm talking about this right now is because the other day if you follow me on instagram you might have seen my heart shaped flan recipe video that i made i really wanted to make this flan and i had to go into manhattan to buy that pan at a michael's and it was only available at the one in chelsea so i took the train in. it was like a 40 minute drive and i left at 8 40 and everyone was commuting to the office and it was like a packed subway and right around maybe like fourth street um and they're around that's on like 32nd street right around fourth street um my stomach started to go and i was like I'm going to shit myself. Yeah, I'm going to shit myself. And I was like, I don't even I don't even know where to shit. Michael's doesn't have a bathroom. I don't want to do. And I thought to myself, I was like, I know there's like this like community bathroom page. So I look it up. As I got out of the subway, would you believe a block and a half away from me was a Trader Joe's? Wow. With a clean restroom. Were you shocked and appalled and excited? Oh my God. I blew up that restroom like nobody's <laughs> business. And I felt so much stronger. And I was like, you know who needs her flowers on our show? Theodore Siegel. Come on, Teddy. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. I think it's helpful. It's amazing. I wonder if other... So it's a Google Doc or it's a, a Google Map, right? You it's access Google it Map. through... Okay, through Google Maps. Yep. So anybody can add. I wonder if other cities have something similar. Well, she went viral on TikTok for kind of creating this. And now she like makes funny videos about like her favorite bathrooms or whatever. Her, one of her favorite bathrooms in all of New York. Guess where it is? You're not going to believe this. Tiffany. Bryant Park. Oh. Remember we couldn't find a bathroom and that's why I went to the other bathroom. There's a bathroom there. We didn't know where it was. There's oh. fresh cut flowers in the Bryant Park bathroom. Shut up. You'll have to see it. We'll post it on the um, Instagram. And we'll post it on the YouTube. Interesting. So Siegel's passion in social media reached land, um, um, landed her in front of city council back in the summer of 2022 when she partnered with Brooklyn Councilwoman Rita Joseph and Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine to promote the bathroom bill, which passed in October 2022. According to the new guidelines, the city is now required to identify locations in every zip code across all five boroughs where public bathrooms could be built. Wow. And then she also introduced like a 1076 in the bill, which allows the public to use readily accessible bathrooms in municipal buildings during business hours. So not any like business, like any city building while they're during business hours has to let you use your bathroom now. Wow. I guess like City Hall before was like, nope. And now they're like, you're literally a tax pay. We're all paying taxes. They're like, why can't we use your bathroom as a taxpayer? Yeah. Isn't that true? I'm like, yes, we should be able to use a bathroom there. That's so true. Because it's like, unless you're going to a restaurant, it's hard to find one in the hustle <laughs> and bustle of the city. And she's 24 and it kind of started off as like a little like social media thing. And then she just like went with it. And now it's like, she's also like a classically trained opera singer. Oh, so wow. She's, like, on, she's either looking for opera gigs or she's like working with like local legislators to like work on bathroom. Yeah. She's testing out the acoustics in every bathroom. She should start ranking those as well. I'm going to tell you her top five bathrooms in New York City. Okay. So number one, Bryant Park. Love that. Um, Number two, the Apple Store in Fifth Avenue. Uh, Apple Store's got a bathroom. It's the one we passed last night. That really beautiful one. Right yeah. In the park. That Apple Store is 24 hours. Which is crazy. In the bathroom. 24 hours which is crazy number three bloomingdale's in soho uh, i could see that number four tiffany tiffany's on fifth avenue i knew that <clears throat> she said they have a stunning single stall gender neutral restroom that are publicly accessible on every single floor except the first i've seen a girl yeah i've seen that one and then the hoxton hotel in brooklyn mm. so i just think it's fun i think it's great i i was in a desperate need and within 10 seconds i was able to find something a block and a half away from me and we get so many emails you guys listen to the trail mix maybe some of you skip that or fast forward to the ones where people shit their pants but there is no shortage of shit shorts yeah we have a lot of ibs survivors here at camp and that's why we always offer free 
shorts at the gift shop for <laughs> campers who shit themselves. It's just something we do. It's a community fund that I've put up, yeah. you know what I mean, as an IBS survivor. Someone DM me recently and when I was talking about wanting to be on Survivor, who, if you're curious, they have not reached out. I'm actually pissed at them. They're missing out on the best thing that could have ever happened to them. Mm-hmm. They never reach out. You know how many campers were out there tagging them? Well, we're we're still hopeful. We're still hopeful. Mm, mm, I'm not. I'm not. You never know. Who knows? But someone DM me. They said from IBS survivor to CBS survivor. That is so funny. How funny is that, you guys? Because CBS is the parent company that owns Survivor. Yes. So funny. Also, if you're a huge Survivor fan, we're considering watching older seasons or we're definitely going to watch older seasons. Let us know some of your favorites. Just a side note quest. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. I was going to sing, but I just... I just can't. No, you said, should I say, you said, you should sing. I said, no, you should sing. And you said, okay. And then I saw it in your eyes. You hesitated. You need to start singing for the campers. They're privately messaging me one by one saying, why isn't Jonathan singing to us more? <laughs> no, you, you laugh and you think it's a lie and maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Guys, I'm shy. You are my shy star girl. I am star girl. <laughs> I've always been star girl. Did you read that book? What? Star girl? No. Mm. Oh, I remember the cover. Now that you say it, you are you are finding a file in my brain I forgot existed. I think they turned it into a movie. And you know who played Stargirl? Uh, Emma Roberts. I don't know my name. Oh, um, Greta Van Fleet. Greta Wanderwall. Thunberg. Naftura, I'm Greta Wanderwall. Yeah, I forgot. What is her name? Anyway, hi guys. Um, We're going to mention a song you can listen to. We've put it in a playlist perfectly curated for any day use. Uh, That's to listen to for free on Spotify, just for shits and giggles, as well as on YouTube. We will put the link down below. Um, thousands of people have saved it. I was like, I wonder how many campers have saved it. And I checked. I was like, damn, people like really do like this. So anyway, my camp song today, who I'm kind of shocked that neither of us have done at any point in time on the list so far, but my song is Team by Lord. We've never done a Lord song. Never done a Lord song. We I could do nine Lord songs right now. So I, I had another one that I was going to do because heroin, I think it's a hell of a drug, but it's also a hell of an <laughs> album. And I can't believe she was so young when that album came out. It's so incredible. Not a single skip. Not no. a single skip. I, I love the song you chose. Yeah. Love it. I like it too. I was going to do buzz cut season. Maybe I'll do that another day. Uh, that was a, a true coin toss, but I think you made the right call. Yeah, I but think it, I did too. Great talk to you. Do you want to sing it together? Yeah. A hundred jewels on throats, a hundred jewels between teeth. Now bring my boys in the skinny craters like the moon. The moon we love like a brother while he glow through the room. Dancing happy as well. Okay, wait, what is also, she saying? Uh, she's just kind of like doing her damn thing. Um, Why don't we sing the chorus? We live in, in cities. cities. Yeah, I don't know. I was just You'll never. <laughs> wait, hold on. We live in cities you'll never see on a screen. Not very pretty, but we sure know how to run free. I was a senior. Sure, you know how to run things. I'm going to get into the lyrics. Okay, I'm sorry. You were No, no, you were a senior. No, no, I want to hear it. I was a senior when that came out. Yeah. I so re- I was like, we live in cities. You'll never see on the screen. I felt misunderstood. I felt like she was speaking for the nation, even though she was speaking from New Zealand, probably being bit by a jellyfish, and like she was living her life. And so are we. Lyrically, team is a tribute to her friends and her country. I feel like that's what a lot of this was about. Like Buzz yeah. season, like you watch the music videos, it's it's royals, all of it. Um, during an interview with Billboard, Lord described the song as her take on most modern music and explained no one comes to New Zealand. No one knows anything about New Zealand. And here I am trying to grow up and become a person. Okay. <laughs> well, I think they're just constantly seeing media like based in either probably Australia or Europe or like America. And they're like, they're just, they weren't, she wasn't seeing herself represented in media. Right. So this song um, came out in uh, 2013. Yep. The lyrics, we sure know how to run things in this song were a direct response to the lyrics. We run things, things don't run we from Miley's can't, um, we can't stop. Oh my God. So that was like a direct response because that was the same time frame. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it is certified double platinum by Australia's Recording Industry Association, uh, also known as Aria. And there's a music video. Yep. Have you seen it? Yeah. Do you know where they filmed it? 
No. We could actually walk there in like an hour. It's like an hour away from where we live in Brooklyn. And it's like an abandoned warehouse dock thing. Isn't that random? Like a poor? Yeah, like a poor. I don't know what it would call it. There's a name for it, but it's not that far from here. Imagine we get there. We're in our jackets. We're like, well, we're here. <laughs> and walk like, back. Well, <laughs> it's abandoned, just like the video. <laughs> Um, but I love that song. I love Lord. I think she's an incredible talent. I love that video of her where she shushes the crowd. It's just like she's on a different level. <laughs> Wait, and, um, can we post that on the Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. Or the one where she like looks at the girl. <laughs> that is wild. Have you guys seen how like mean Lord is to her audience? I don't think she means. No, me. I, think I don't it's care. Just her performing. She literally wants everyone to shut the fuck up when she sings. She will shush people. She will give them death glares if they're singing too loud. She does not want you to come and sing. She's like, come, be quiet, sit down and listen. And I think that's kind of rude because people are paying tickets to see you, but like, whatever, paying like money. I don't know. She's an artist. She's, she's an she artist. She does artist things. But um, I love her. I love her. I love her too. And uh, I'm, I think she's going to announce a new album soon by the time this comes out. Hopefully she already did, but she's been like posting things on social media. Kyle McLaughlin has been loving it and basically reposting all the stuff she's been posting like taking photos of himself how she's taking photos of herself Mm -hmm. um yeah and it's just a really good time i love lord oh lordy lordy love love lord what's your camp song it's funny because my camp song is a uk artist oh miss amy winehouse oh yes yeah, so you did we're, tell me. we're keeping it international this week. The reason why I'm doing an Amy Winehouse song this week is because I just noticed that Spotify finally released my favorite version of her music. She did this like live partnership, like multi CD thing with BBC mm-hmm. um, Radio, which yeah. I I think anything that the BBC puts on for like musical artists, their live performances, anything they work with with an artist, I always love. They have a great way to work with like just entertainers. Yeah. In 2015, I was at a Newbury Comics and I bought this blue CD and it was an Amy Winehouse live BBC like CD. And I loved it so much. I played it until it wouldn't even like play anymore. And I loved like um, Fuck Me Pops was my favorite song on that one. I feel like I shouldn't even say that because it's like it's kind of an aggressive song. Fuck Me Pops. But it's my favorite Amy Winehouse song. But the studio version of it, I don't love so much. It feels a little too like clean. And the the live version I love from that CD was so raw and crazy and like just very like the energy in it is unreal. Um, but it was never on Spotify my entire life. And I feel like after I lost that CD for years, I just like couldn't listen to it unless I found it on YouTube. And then I was looking for it the other day on Spotify on Amy Winehouse and they released them on 2021. Wow. And I had no idea. So this very specific version of Fuck Me Pumps by Amy Winehouse it is so sexy. It's so fun. It's so like, ugh. it makes you really want to just be a bad bitch. It's incredible. I'm not going to say much more about it because we all know Amy. We all love Amy. I could do a hundred thousand Amy Winehouse songs. She doesn't have much music, but <laughs> I could do multiple ones, but this one, it brings me back to a time and I found the old Instagram post. Um, it was archived. Yeah. Wait, did you screenshot yeah, it? Yeah, I have. I'll okay, good. It. good. And I, I bought that CD that day and then I bought a no doubt greatest hit CD. Classic. And I was like, <laughs> Gotta go to the beach. Gotta listen to my CDs. I'm like, shut the hell up. You're so drama. You're so drama, but it's literally still you. You're like, hopping in the Jeep that I don't have. I know. You don't know thought anytime Lana comes out with new music, I have to go on a two-hour car ride by myself. You have to. It's just, it's what you have to do. Music to me sounds best in a vehicle. Hmm. It just, there's something about the motion with the audio. Unless you're in like a, a, a Grand Dam and the subwoofer is like, <laughs> you know the time. Just as Lana intended it. Just as Amy intended it. <laughs> Lord would give you a death glare. Yeah. Well, okay, so your song is Fuck Me Bombs. Yeah, Fuck Me Bombs. Oh my God, great. I love that song. And it was sitting there waiting for you on the shelf since 2021. I know, because but it wasn't on it the entire time before that. Yeah, I wonder if they like didn't do an announcement or if they did an announcement and you missed it. Because I saw, I, I was listening to New Music Friday and some one of her songs from like The Lioness, which has been out for years, popped up and I was like, oh, this isn't a new song. I was like, maybe it's a new like remix and it wasn't. Maybe there's some sort of like contract that her her music wasn't allowed on certain streaming services and now it's like expired. I don't know because it's kind of like 10 years. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. We can speculate all we want, but we're not going to get any closer to the answer. So thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. It was kooky. It was crazy. I'm disassociating. Don't you know? <laughs> what are we going to get for food? I'm going to get cereal. Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I need protein. I think I'm lacking protein. We gotta go. We gotta figure this out. Yeah. We'll see you next week, campers. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out, campers. campers.